Welcome to Collaboration and Communication in Healthcare, Principles of Interprofessional Practice. My name is Maria Wamsley, and I'm a professor of clinical medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, in the School of Medicine. In this course, you're going to learn some of the key skills and principles of interprofessional practice that will hopefully help you as you move into your professional career. We're going to start in Module 1 talking about what is it all about, introducing core interprofessional concepts. Our learning objectives for this module are that by the end you'll be able to define interprofessional collaborative practice and interprofessional education. You'll be able to discuss the impact of interprofessional collaborative care on patient safety and quality of care. We're going to describe some of the current changes in the healthcare system that necessitate increasing interprofessional collaboration. We're going to compare and contrast different forms of interprofessional work and describe some of the key elements of effective team based care. Finally, we're going to talk about some of the facilitators and barriers to interprofessional collaborative practice that exist. Segment one, what is interprofessional collaborative practice? In this segment, we're going to define some key terms for you that we'll be using throughout the course. And we're going to provide you with a framework for interprofessional collaborative competencies. We're going to discuss some of the changes moving healthcare towards interprofessional collaboration. Let's start by defining interprofessional collaborative practice. There have been a number of different terms used, including interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. You may have heard these in your work, and many people use these interchangeably. We're going to try to stick with interprofessional because that really uh, reflects what we mean in this course. The World Health Organization defines interprofessional collaborative practice as occurring when multiple healthcare workers from different professional backgrounds provide comprehensive services by working with patients, their families, carers, and communities to deliver the highest quality of care across settings. There are many frameworks and to think about interprofessional collaborative competencies. This is one framework that's derived from Barr's framework uh, in 1998 that really thinks about three different types of professional competencies that uh, professionals need to master. The first is really the set of competencies that you need to master as part of your discipline. And for each discipline or profession, we have a specific set of competencies that we have to master. An example of a disciplinary specific competency would be uh, rehabilitation. Um, so physical therapists have expertise in rehabilitation. And obviously, there's a lot of overlap between the professions in terms of these disciplinary specific expertise areas. In addition to the disciplinary specific expertise, there are common competencies that we all share as professionals. These are things like systems thinking, um, continuous quality improvement, and patient-centered care. These are things that we all have to master as professionals and cross the professions. And then finally, they're the interprofessional collaborative competencies where this course will focus. These are things that, as healthcare professionals, we need to master in order to be able to work together. Things like understanding teams, uh, knowing the roles and responsibilities of those who work on our teams, how to effectively distribute tasks in a team, um, some communication skills that are useful when we're collaborating with others, and then conflict management skills. And this is where our course will focus. If you contrast the definition of interprofessional collaboration with interprofessional education, you'll see how they are related. Interprofessional education is increasingly seen as an important part of giving learners the knowledge and the skills that they need to better collaborate with other healthcare professionals in the workplace. In this course, we hope you have the opportunity to learn from the other folks taking this course with you those people who are from different professional backgrounds. Interprofessional education occurs when members, usually students, but it can also be healthcare professionals, of two or more healthcare professions engage in learning with, from, or about each other. 
in order to enable effective collaboration and improve healthcare outcomes. Interprofessional education, as I mentioned, is really critical to developing the knowledge, attitudes, and skills to better function in an interprofessional team. <clears throat> Hopefully with these skills, interprofessional collaborative practice will improve. And we know from studies that interprofessional education does improve attitudes towards interprofessional collaborative practice and increases trainee uh, skills in interprofessional collaboration. As we'll discuss in upcoming segments, interprofessional collaborative practice can also lead to improved patient outcomes. Um, it improves healthcare access, it improves patient safety, and it decreases error rates. Now that we've talked about some definitions, let's hear what some healthcare professionals have to say about the importance of interprofessional education and interprofessional collaboration in their own work. I think historically there's been this idea that the doctor-patient relationship, those two people, is the most important thing. And I would argue actually that that's not true anymore, if it ever was, that the most important thing is that the patient has a relationship with multiple members of the team. That students should have the understanding that they're expected to function in an interprofessional um, practice setting in the community from the very beginning of their education. From the day they start medical school, nursing school, dental school, have the deans and their uh, initial courses reference the fact and set up the expectation so that it's clear and they know that it's important. For a very successful collaborative effort, um, everyone needs to have the same goal. Um, whether it could be to you know decrease hospital readmissions or you know improve the patient experience in the waiting room or better manage their medications. Um, it's, I feel like every profession needs to be on the same page. Recognize the strengths and limitations of your own profession and you reach outside to other disciplines to, um, to ask for assistance in, in managing um, a complex situation um, and understanding that, that another discipline may be, may be able to handle a situation better than my own. Um, and then just having the, being humble enough to ask I think it's really exciting that there is so much um, attention right now on interprofessional education. It's uh, a theme that's close to my heart and I think it really does improve outcomes for patients and I think it also improves um, and contains healthcare costs. I'm hopeful that this is not a moment in history and rather a transformative shift in how we think about healthcare. Why has interprofessional collaboration become increasingly important in healthcare? Well, there are a number of forces that have led us to the realization that we need to collaborate effectively with other healthcare professionals in order to provide high quality, safe, effective, patient-centered care. Medicine has become increasingly complex and specialized. Modern healthcare is evolving at a rapid pace. The U.S. National Guidelines Clearinghouse now lists over 2,700 guidelines, and each year the results of more than 25,000 clinical trials are published in the literature. No single provider is able to stay abreast of all this information, um, and we can function as an island. In addition, we're seeing increasing comorbidities in our patient population that really require multiple providers to work together collaboratively. It's estimated that the average Medicare beneficiary in the United States visits two primary care providers and five specialists at, per year. And that's in addition to multiple other members of the healthcare team, such as pharmacists, nutritionists, nurses, dentists, and social workers. This level of complexity and comorbidity really requires that we work together. And finally, the aging of our population means that we're seeing an increased burden of chronic disease. Many of these patients, again, have multiple comorbidities that benefit from a team-based approach to care. We'll talk more about this in an upcoming segment about some other changes as well in the healthcare system that are moving us towards more collaborative care. 
So now let's check your understanding of what we've talked about. What is interprofessional education? Healthcare providers from different professions collaborating to provide patient care. Two or more professions engaging and learning with, from, and about each other. Or students from different professions learning the same material together. That's correct, it's B, two or more professions engaging and learning with, from, and about each other. Now let's use a case to illustrate how some of the complexities of medical care um, require us to work better to collaborate. This is the case of Mr. John Morgan. He's a 75-year-old gentleman with multiple chronic medical issues, including congestive heart failure, hypertension, coronary artery disease, chronic kidney disease, and elevated cholesterol. He's a smoker and has depression and anxiety. He's had multiple admissions to the hospital in the past year for congestive heart failure and has a poor understanding of his disease. His medication regimen is complex. He frequently misses his clinic visits due to transportation issues. And during his recent hospitalization, the dose of diuretics was adjusted in order to better control his heart failure. Unfortunately, he had difficulty obtaining his medications after the hospital discharge. <clears throat> he has a poor understanding of dietary restrictions. And although he was told to monitor his weight at home after the discharge, he didn't have a scale. He was unable to book an appointment with his primary care provider, Renee Sanchez, at the time of his discharge, and when offered a, an appointment with another member of the team, he declined. <clears throat> Unfortunately, after being at home two weeks, he was readmitted to the hospital for worsening congestive heart failure. This scenario is all too common in healthcare. Heart failure is one of the leading causes of hospitalization among adults over 65 in the United States. And despite dramatic improvements in our treatments of heart failure, rehospitalization rates remain high, with as many as 50% of patients readmitted within six months after a discharge. It's estimated that up to 75% of these admissions may be preventable with better access to care, better communication, and coordination of care at the time of discharge. There were obviously many challenges in Mr. Morgan's case um, at both uh, systems level um, in the hospital and things that were preventing him from accessing care um, from his home. Now let's re-envision his care in a more team-based care model a team specifically designed for patients with congestive heart failure. <clears throat> so Mr. Morgan met with the congestive heart failure team nurse, Mark Lloyd, and a nutritionist prior to his discharge from the hospital. The CHF team was able to provide a scale to Mr. Morgan at low cost. Mr. Lloyd contacted Mr. Morgan within 48 hours of his discharge from the hospital and identified that he was having trouble obtaining his medicines. The team pharmacist, John Wilson, reviewed Mr. Morgan's medications for drug interactions. He was able to simplify his regimen for better adherence, and he spoke with him and educated him about the medications he was taking. Mr. Lloyd was able to visit Mr. Morgan at home to reinforce the need for daily weights and dietary restrictions. He also helped to arrange follow-up with Mr. Morgan's primary care provider and also with his cardiologist. The social worker on the team, Paul Trimble, provided support and helped to arrange transportation to his upcoming visits. So congestive heart failure is really just one example of a disease in which an interprofessional team-based care approach is increasingly recommended as a way to improve the quality of care, to prevent rehospitalization, and to improve the patient's quality of life. CHF programs with an interprofessional team approach have been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization by 20 to 50 percent and are associated with fewer costs. 
So some of the key learning points from this segment. Interprofessional education and interprofessional collaboration are increasingly recognized as key to providing high-quality patient-centered care. Interprofessional collaborative competencies are important for all healthcare professionals. And interprofessional collaboration can lead to improved patient outcomes. So let's turn to a forum discussion question. Where in your work have you seen positive examples of interprofessional collaboration that enhance patient care? We look forward to hearing from you online.